Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, recovering after the review of Tales from the Hood 2. Yeah, the incredibly lame, pointless, and awful direct-to-video sequel to the original 1995 horror anthology. That's an underrated gem, and a cult classic too. <laughs> yeah. But now, I'm going to review another horror film in the month of October called 30 Days of Night. It's based on a graphic novel by Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith. That's a vampire film about um, vampires who came in a small Alaskan town and yeah, going around killing the townspeople, even sleigh dogs too. So it was up for them to survive through 30 days of nights. Yeah. And this was a big surprise. I saw this movie a long time ago when it aired on TV. I think it was Stars or Encore that I watched this. And I was curious to check it out because this was pretty interesting. And I really enjoyed it. So this was produced by Sam Raimi and Robert Tappert, who had their own production company called Ghost House Pictures. Yeah, they produced several films. And it was directed by David Slane, who was known for directing films like Hard Candy, you know, the one with Ellen Page. I enjoy that film. But yes, he was also responsible for directing one of the Twilight movies, Eclipse. This is a better vampire film than Twilight, that's for sure. <laughs> but let's not go there. But this movie also spawned. Uh, I believe two miniseries, uh, one called Blood Trails and the other one called Dust to Dust, which aired on FearNet, which is now totally defunct, along with their website. And they had a direct-to-video sequel called Dark Days. I never saw any of them, and I never read the graphic novel either, but I saw this, and that's all that matters. It stars Josh Hardnett, Melissa George, Danny Houston, Ben Foster, Mark Boone Jr., Mark Randall, Amber Sansbury, Mandu Bennett, Megan Finch, Joe Tobeck, Elizabeth Hartform, Nathan Neal Lees, with Craig Hall, and Cheek. Littlewood. It's written by Steve Niles, Stuart B.T., and Brian Nelson, and it's directed by David Slane. On a barrel, Alaska, the townspeople are preparing for the annual 30 days of night, which is during the winter session, for over a month long of polar night. But as they're getting ready, we suddenly meet a stranger that's coming right beneath their path. And he's played by Ben Foster. Who suddenly came from a large ship and sabotaged the entire town, communications, and transport to the outside world. Yeah, he even has all these cell phones that are being burned into a ground. Um, that's where we meet a young barrel sheriff named Eben Olsen, who's played by Josh Hardnett, who investigates and also learns that his estranged wife named Stella, who's played by Marissa George, had missed the last plane and he had to stay for only 30 days. But during that night, a whole band of vampires that's led by Marlo, who's played by Danny Houston, starts to attack and slaughter most of the townspeople, even stabbed um, several of the slave dogs. Even his younger brother Jake, who's uh, played by Mark Randall, along with several other survivors, had to take shelter in a board-up house with a hidden attic. 
So Marlo suddenly founds the stranger that's being locked up in a jail cell at the police station. Yeah, he's already been handcuffed. I mean, we actually found the stranger at a local um, diner called Ico's Diner. Uh, the stranger suddenly believes that Marlo was going to turn him into a vampire. But Marlo suddenly thanks him for that. For what he was doing and just snaps his neck. But Marlo ironically comments to all of his fellow vampires, you know, the things they believe, as they said in, in their own native language. Yeah, because they, they speak in, in vampire language. Eighteen days later, a blizzard started to hit, and the group decided to use the whiteout to go to a general store for supplies, and that's when they spotted a little girl that's a vampire. And you know, just uh, attacked uh, one victim and was ready to attack more. <laughs> yeah, this is where she says, I finished playing with him. Do you want to play? <laughs> and she just attacks them. Until, until Carter suddenly sprays uh, the little girl with pepper spray. And then um, uh, they held her off and, and until uh, Jake suddenly takes the, the shovel and stabs her in the neck. So now she dies. <laughs> um, so, so they continue to try to find some more shelter around for, for over uh, two weeks until they finally spotted um, a deputy named Billy Akika, who's played by Manu Bennett, who actually singled them with a flashlight and try to bring them back to the station after finding out that he killed his family just to save him from more painful death that's going to arrive. So the trio suddenly find the others into the utility door which is a powered sewage uh, treatment station that still has all the power that they need since they already shut off all the power uh, at the town so they wind up going straight in there while Stella and the little girl that she found suddenly hides underneath uh, the truck um, as the vampires arrived and are about to prepare themselves to go after and attack. So one, one vampire went inside the Yuda door and attacked uh, Billy. So now Billy's being infected so now uh, even had to take the the axe and and chop off his head but then he was trying to find a way to actually save um, Stella and the little girl since the entire town is is being blown up to pieces or at this rate it was on fire because they they set it off with all that gas they light the match and and Eben's plan was to take um, was to take a needle and inject himself with Billy's blood, so that way he can become one of them. So that way he can attack the the leader of of the vampires, um, uh, Marlo. In that final showdown, in that where he gets to beat the shit out of him, but I know he gets beat up too. So that way he can finally save Stella and the little girl. Once uh, he finally got his match. So then as the sun rises up. As we finally get ready for dawn. Yeah, after he killed the leader of Marlo. Uh, all the vampires have disappeared. So now the rest of the townspeople are safe. Until the end of the movie where something goes wrong well something does happen to uh, Eben I really did enjoy the film it's it's really amazing it's probably one of the best horror films I've seen in the 2000s uh, this was definitely well done uh, they did use uh, CGI for the effects 
and, and some of the jump scares that went into it. Uh, but not annoying jump scares, it's the actual jump scares that really work. So it makes it more scarier. Um, so they actually used the effects from uh, Weta Digital. So they created the, the effects of all the movements and, and the attacks. You know, when all the blood starts to rush. But they also have a mix of practical effects too. So they did use a lot of prosthetics. You know, they created a lot of um, prosthetic heads. They even had a scene where, where they show a decapitated head on the pole of one of the victims. So this, this is really interesting. Um, they created all the blood and, and gore in the mix. So there you go. I mean, I love the fact that we get a horror film that's shot in an Alaskan town because it just really works. Um, it was just like uh, John Carpenter's The Fane, or even the original The Fane, where they, where goodness knows what's going to happen next when someone becomes uh, one of those fiends. <laughs> but this time you get vampires and they go around attacking all the townspeople at a small town. And it was very well done. Um, has a great cast. Uh, Josh Hartnett surprisingly was very good as the sheriff, uh, Eben. I mean, I know some people say he's wooden these days, but actually he was very good and definitely served his purpose to to be in a uh, horror film because he's been in a horror film before. I mean, the faculty come to mind. Um, and so is Melissa George. Um, I know she's been in other stuff. It's great to see her in this. Ben Foster is also good as a stranger in a rather smaller role that he's given. And as well as all the rest of the cast in the movie. So they give it for what they were doing. Uh, Danny Houston, very good as Marlo, the leader of the vampires. So. Yeah, with all the languages he had to speak. Yeah, because they have subtitles to just to find out what they're saying. Um, and the fact that he does all the attacks uh, along with the rest of the other vampires, including the one, the ball-headed guy. <laughs> and even the girl. Uh, it was amazing. And they actually run pretty fast, too. And they, they even walk a bit slowly, like like what humans do. So they don't walk exactly like zombies, but they just go around walking around, you know, getting ready to attack and slaughter everyone. You know, they go around uh, jumping through windows, they jump through rooftops, they even jump through on top of the sheriff's uh, SUV, and the vampires lift up and flip the SUV and was ready to attack both Eben and Stella. Just while they were about to escape, and they're trying to go all the way straight into the tractor. <laughs> yeah, where Bo is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. amazing. Uh, I love that moment where where uh, Bo uh, Brower is played by Mark Boone Jr., who suddenly takes uh, the the tractor and he goes around uh, slaughtering all these vampires around. And goes straight into the the building where he was going to prepare to to actually blow them up by using those um, those flares. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was really interesting until yeah he gets stumped by by Marlo. It has a lot of brutal violence and gore, some comic elements in the mix, everything. Um, it was very well done, well made, and I really, and it really uh, suits its purpose. And it is a slow-paced film, only 113 minutes, which is an hour and 53 minutes. It's the perfect pacing that they got. Uh, the budget was only 30 million dollars, ironically enough. So for 30 days, it's 30 million. <laughs> But it made seventy-five point five million dollars, so it was a hit uh, 
for October of 2007. Actually has a great score, great cinematography, fast paced editing that they went for. And I love the setting and I thought they did a wonderful job. And David Slane the, did an amazing job directing this. I mean after uh, Park Candy he finally did a, a very good horror film that he was going for. I just wish he has done some more horror films like this because then that would definitely save his uh, career. It got mixed reviews from critics but I really wish it had a higher rating than 51% on Brown Tomatoes because it really didn't deserve that. So that's how I felt. Um, but it's a fun movie. Um, check it out. You'll have fun. Especially if you love vampire films and other horror films. And the Blu-ray is uh, very special. Um, has um, a few features uh, like a commentary with the actor uh, Josh Hartnett along with actress Bliss of George and even producer Robert Tappard come to mind. So it's very nice to listen to. and. It has a featurette uh, that you can put together so into 15 minutes, so it really works. They had all the energy that they had to do for it. And even has the photo gallery which shows just 30 images of how it transfers from the graphic novel to uh, the entire movie. So they had to use all these images for, for these particular shots to see how it matches and if they shot it differently. There you go. Um, and yes, they did use a lot of dark, gritty, um, monochromatic um, feel to it by using a mix of digital cameras and and 35 millimeter film to go with it, because you could tell this was shot on film. And they used a mix of all the other shots in high definition to to actually match. So it just looks um, very interesting and even shows how cold it really is too. I mean how breezy it looks with all that blizzard that's happening throughout the entire town. It's, it's just wow. <laughs> so anyway I give 30 Days of Night five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.